Yo, what is going on my YouTube people? This is Gavin Assidy here again with you for another video and today I have yet another brand new operator school video this time talking about the second of the two new Japanese operators in Rainbow Six Siege. Yesterday I did do a video talking about Habana so if you have not seen that yet I definitely recommend you go and check that out and I will leave a link to that down in the description. If you are new to the Operator School series how it works is I go over each and every operator in Rainbow Six Siege and grade them on a scale of 1 to 10 in three different categories being weapons gadgets and versatility and then I finally give them an overall grade and tell you why I think you should use them. So getting right into Echo and who he is, he is a defending operator who is part of the Japanese SAT task force and his gadget is a yokai drone which is a hovering drone that releases disorienting sonic bursts and his drone also allows for video to be transmitted to the operator. As usual we will go more in depth on the gadget a little bit later but now we're going to start off by talking about our first category of weapons. So for weapons, I have given Echo an 8 out of 10. Echo has two primary weapons to choose from. The first that we're going to be talking about here is the Supernova Pump Action Shotgun. This is a very slow but strong pump action and if we take a look at some of the in-game stats, it does 32 damage. It has a very slow fire rate as I mentioned. The mobility is 50 and then the mag capacity is 7. The recoil really doesn't matter too much on this weapon because the pump is so slow by the time you chamber in the next shell, it is pretty much centered. Now on the contrary to Habana, Echo's shotgun is very useful on defense. I personally think this is one of the best pump action shotguns in the game. As long as you do aim down sights and get all pellets on your target, it kills from a very long range. I think this is overall a great option to use on a lot of different maps, and if you plan on anchoring the objective, it's a good way to go. As for how I like to run it, it would be the same as when using Habana using just the reflex sight and I like using the laser sight on this weapon. Now if we take a look at Echo's second primary weapon, he has the MP5 SD, which is an MP5 variant that has a integrated silencer with it. If we do take a look at some of the in-game stats, it does 23 damage, which is a little bit on the weaker side. It has a fire rate of 800. Again, the mobility is 50, and then the mag capacity is at 30. If you do include the one round in the chamber, you have 31 rounds to shoot at your enemy. The recoil on this weapon shows to be a little bit in the moderate range. However, I personally think the recoil is very, very good on this weapon. The first shot recoil is very low, so it is very easy to get headshots. I think that the recoil is a lot lower than it shows on the in-game stats. At least for me, it feels that way. As for how I like to run it, I like using the holographic and then the vertical grip. The reason I score his weapon a little bit lower is just because the MP5 is kind of a pea shooter at times. If you aren't getting those headshots, it kind of feels like it's taking a lot to kill those enemies since it only does 23 damage and you cannot take the suppressor off. The shotgun is good, but sometimes a little bit inconsistent and I will say that you're not always going to want to run a shotgun. So you are a little bit stuck there and limited to range, but you do have the option to use the Bearing 9 submachine gun as your secondary, which is a great option. Now we're going to shift over and talk about our second category of gadget. So for gadget, I have given Echo a 9 out of 10. Now I think this can be one of the most powerful gadgets on the defensive team as long as you're using it properly. You have to be extremely careful where you're going to be placing this drone because you only get one so if Twitch takes it out or IQ finds you, you're pretty much done for. The one major downside to Echo's drone is you are not able to spot any of the enemies so you're really going to have to call out to your teammates and let them know where they are. Also, your teammates will not be able to access the drone to see where the enemies are. It's strictly up to Echo to call that out. So I would say there are three main features on the Yokai drone that makes it absolutely amazing. First off being that it can kind of cloak and become mostly invisible. You do see a little bit of the outline, but it makes it very hard for the enemy team to spot if they do not have an IQ. Now this does only happen while you are in the stationary position. When you are droning or using the drone normally driving around, it does not happen, but you have to kind of jump up, and when sticking to the wall after a couple seconds, it uses its cloaking ability. Now, when you are in the stationary position, that also allows you to use your sonic burst to really disorient the enemy. The amount of sonic bursts you have are actually unlimited. However, you do get three at a time before it goes on a kind of cooldown period. 
I would say that you shouldn't just kind of waste them and spray them as fast as you can on the enemies. You can use one or two, be patient, move your drone, and then use the final one. And also to mention, just as it is important to go for headshots with regular weapons, you're definitely going to want to do the same with the Yokai drone because when you do get a headshot with the Sonic Burst, it has way more of an effect on the enemy making it last a lot longer. Also to mention, if the enemy does move, it increases the effect of the Sonic Burst. You will be able to tell when you get a headshot by the middle kind of cursor lighting up red, allowing you to know that you are locked in for a headshot. It does take a second or two for the Sonic Wave to reach. It's not something that's instantaneous. So make sure you go for those headshots and it can last up to eight seconds long to disorient the enemy. Now the second amazing feature that the Yokai drone has is Thatcher's EMP grenades will not take it out. However, if you do get hit by an EMP, it will disable your drone for about 10 seconds, rendering you to not be able to use it. If it is in that cloaking stationary phase, it will drop down to the crown and just kind of sit there, making it an easy target for the enemies to take out but you will still be able to use it after that 10 second period. I think this is a great attribute for the Yokai drone and it really kind of makes the attacking team think about whether or not they want to use an IQ. As for the final feature for the Yokai drone that I think is extremely powerful is the fact that you can cancel animations. It's one of the best gadgets to use on bomb because you can stop the enemy team from planting the bomb in those crucial final seconds as well as it is amazing for stopping thermite from getting through hatches. I've had many clutch rounds playing on maps for instance like Oregon and being able to stop Thermite from getting the hatch allowing me to protect my teammates and I while defending the basement. I recommend using his drone on rooms that have one or two entry points so you can really target the enemies and have a better chance of disorienting them. Also really try to stick with teammates and having somebody who can back you up and take them out while they are in that dazed situation that can seemingly last forever. Also, just don't really be afraid to move around with it. It can be helpful to use a sonic burst or two and then move your drone into another room making it really hard for the enemies to find your drone. Overall, I think he has a really amazing gadget as long as you know how to use it. Now to move on to our final category of versatility. So for versatility, I have given Echo a seven out of 10. I don't really think he is the most versatile operator. If you do play it right with the Yokai drone, you are able to kind of roam and use that to help you out. However, you are pretty stationary on that drone, making you very vulnerable. You really need your teammates to help you out. And they even said he was pretty much specifically made to be kind of that anchor operator who sits in the objective. He does have three armor and only one speed. He also really can't do much going up against riot shielders since he doesn't have any sort of explosive C4 or impact grenades. He is also just significantly more powerful with the team rather than just kind of playing it on your own. So for those few reasons, his versatility score will suffer a little bit. So when we look at the overall score for Echo and how the numbers play out, he gets a flat eight out of 10. Again, overall, I think he is a great operator as long as you know what you're doing with his drone and you have teammates to communicate and kind of help you out. He isn't the best solo player. It is possible to get away with it, but again, just not the best person to use. His MP5 is a little bit on the weaker side, but reasons why you should use him, he is just really good for slowing down the attacking team. He can cancel animations on key game modes like Bomb helping you win rounds, as well as just really make it hard for the enemy team to push the objective. Especially in ranked now being at three minute rounds, he can be a very powerful operator. But with all of that said, that will pretty much wrap up this video. I really hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please make sure to hit that like button. I greatly appreciate the support. Feel free to comment down below letting me know what you think about Echo or Hibana, which one you like better. If you are new, do not be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, you guys have a good one. Peace.